Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we will take a look into at post mapping annotation and at request body annotation. Well, the post HTTP method is used to create a resource and at post mapping annotation is used for mapping HTTP post request to a specific handler method. Specifically, at post mapping annotation is a composite annotation that acts as a shortcut for at request mapping annotation plus HTTP post method. Next, at request body annotation is responsible for retrieving the HTTP request body and automatically converting it into Java object. So let us go ahead and let us see the usage of these two annotation with example. So let's go to our project in integer idea and go to book controller and here let me quickly create a REST API. So let us type public and let's give return type of the method as a book and let's give method name as create book and then let us pass the book as a method argument next let us you know print this book so here just type system.println and then book dot get id and then system.println book dot get title and then system.println book dot get description next let us return this book all right perfect now we have created a create book next let us annotate this create book method with at request mapping annotation next this at request mapping annotation is used to map the incoming request to this particular method right in this case the incoming request is http post request so here basically we need to use method attribute to define the HTTP POST method. So here just pass request method dot POST and next we can also specify the URI for this REST API. So here we can use value attribute and then simply pass the URI let us say books and slash create. So this is how we create a REST API that handles incoming HTTP POST request and here we use at request mapping annotation to map incoming HTTP POST request to this particular method. Next, as we know that at POST mapping annotation is a shortcut annotation for at request mapping annotation plus HTTP POST method. So if you look at this example over here, so at POST mapping annotation is a shortcut annotation for this at request mapping annotation plus HTTP POST method, right? So instead of using this line of code what we can do is we can simply use add post mapping annotation for example here just remove this add request mapping annotation and just use add post mapping annotation and whenever we use add post mapping annotation then we don't have to specify the http post method over here all right perfect next if you go inside post mapping annotation you can see post mapping annotation is already annotated with add request mapping annotation plus http post method it means post mapping annotation is a shortcut annotation for at request mapping annotation plus http post method and this post mapping annotation it works same as request mapping annotation plus http post request all right next let's go back to our code and here we can also use different attributes like we can use you know consumes attribute to specify the media type for example here let us say media type application slash json it means this rest api consumes the data that we have specified using media type for example here we have specified application slash json as a media type so this rest api will consume the data that is in a json format from the request next we, we need to use one more annotation that is at request body annotation so here go to create book method and you can see book is a argument for this method right so here let us annotate this method argument with at request body annotation. Well this at request body annotation is responsible to retrieve the JSON data from the request body and it will convert that JSON into this book Java object. Okay. And again at request body annotation internally uses Spring MUC provided HTTP message converters to convert a JSON into Java object. Alright. So this is how the at request body annotation works. Alright, so just remember 
at request body annotation it is responsible to retrieve the json data from the request body and it will convert that json into this java object all right perfect next let us go ahead and let us run the spring boot application and let us see how this post mapping you know annotation works so from here i am going to stop and run the spring boot application well our spring boot application is up and running next in order to test this post rest api we have to use the postman client well we can call the get rest api from the browser itself but in order to test post put delete rest api we have to use the postman client isn't it so let us open the postman client over here and create a new request and here let us choose http post method and let us type the url localhost http and then localhost slash 800 slash api slash well if you go back to the code we have specified the uri slash books slash created so let me copy this and let me paste it over here next we need to pass the book object in a body right so go to body and select raw here and then choose content type json and within the body we need to pass the json okay next go ahead and click on send button and there we go in a response you can see the book object in a json format and the http status 200 okay it means the create book rest api is working as expected next let's go back to include idea or go to console and you can see we have printed the book id book title description right so this is what you can see in a console all right so basically we use add post mapping annotation to map incoming http post request to this particular method next notice here this post request contains a json in a request body and we use add request body annotation to retrieve this json object from the request body and convert that json object into this book java object okay now it makes sense right so add request body annotation is used to retrieve this json from the request body and it convert that json into this book java object okay and in order to convert json into java object at request body annotation internal uses http message converters well here one more important point is whenever we create a rest api that create a new resource then that rest api have to return the http status 201 to the client so in this case this rest api returns the http status 200 to the client for example if you look at the postman's client you can see the http status 200 okay right but ideally this create book rest api have to return the http status 201 created to the client so let us go ahead and let us see how to add http status as a response to this rest api so here we can use either at response status annotation to specify the http status for example here let us use at response annotation and it has a value attribute and here we can specify http status created as a http status okay next let us rerun the spring boot application and let us see how this change works well our spring boot application is up and running let's go back to postman client and let's again make the request and you can see the http status 201 created so this is how we can specify the http status for the rest api well one more way is we can use response entity class as well for example let me comment out this and here let me use the response entity class so make sure that you choose response entity class from org.springframework.http package so response entity is a generic class we have to pass book as a type and we need to return the instance of response entity so here return new response entity and then we need to pass book as a value to the constructor and then we can specify the http status that is created so this is how we can configure the response for the rest api okay next let us rerun the spring boot application and let us see how this works well our spring boot application is up and running next let's go to postman's client 
and again make the request and there we go http status 201 created and the response contains the book object in a json format so this is how we can specify the http status in a response of the rest api either you can use at response status annotation or response entity class all right so this is all about post mapping and request body annotations all right great i will see you in the next lecture